Yeah. Would you ever consider making a video about Luther's book on the bondage of the will? And okay. Contrasting it with his commentary on Genesis. I, okay. So the bondage of the will is Luther's book that Calvinists love. In fact, many Calvinists only read the bondage of the will and they don't really read uh, <laughs> anything else. Um, at least that was my experience uh, with, within the Reformed tradition. That's certainly the most influential book among, among uh, Reformed in, of Luther's. And yeah, there, there's a debate about exactly what Luther means in the bondage of the will uh, over a number of statements. And those statements at times can sound like a, a double predestination. And at other times, he seems to say that all things are, are just are determined. So it seems that Luther holds to what is a hard determinism in many ways in the bondage of the will. What you do see, though, is Melanchthon in particular kind of tones down a lot of Luther's language. And um, Luther, yeah, Melanchthon, I think, is a lot more careful than Luther on some of these points. And what we find in the confessional statements of the Lutheran Church, like the Augsburg Confession, is a, a toned down version of Luther's thought. Now, I don't mean that it's inconsistent with Luther's thought, but what I mean is that Luther or Melanchthon gives some qualifications to understanding Luther when he says things like all things happen of necessity, or when he says things like there is no free will. And in particular, Melanchthon includes two things in the Augsburg Confession, two articles of the Augsburg Confession that, that kind of moderate this a bit. One is to say that God is not the cause of sin. So there is a very clear separation from of God from sin. To say that to say all things are of happen of necessity is not to say that God forces sin or causes sin in some way. But we need to make sure that we separate sin from from God. And Luther doesn't always make those necessary qualifications because <laughs> Luther, you know, I mean, one thing to realize about Bonnet of the Will also he wrote very quickly and he wrote kind of heated. Uh, he was kind of, uh, you know, angry at the time. Well, what the other issue was of, with Melanchthon, uh, the other place where he kind of moderated Luther's ideas, and that was that he made this distinction of free will in terms of things above us and things below us. So he clarified that when we say there is no free will, what that means is there is no free will in spiritual things, not in just regular earthly decision making. So he makes this distinction between things above us and things below us. In terms of things above us, there there is no free will in terms of things below us. There is free will. Like we have decisions to make choices about just regular earthly, earthly things. Um, so we have to understand Luther, I think in a kind of moderated sense, especially because confessional Lutherans hold to the confessions. We, what we affirm is the teaching of the Luther confessions themselves, not every statement that ever showed up in Luther. But what I've mentioned before is Luther in his Genesis commentary gives some, Kind of final thoughts. This is one of his l last writings, and in that, it's often considered Luther's last great, uh, great writing. These Genesis lectures, and wonderful, wonderful work. And in that, Luther has a little bit of a discussion of predestination, which I think helps to put the bondage of the will in a really good context in terms of how uh, how he understands it. So, I would suggest that people look at the Genesis commentary there. So, I can't get any more in depth here. I don't have the Genesis commentary right in front of me um, at the moment, but perhaps delve, I'll delve into that a little more um, at some point.